Hello everyone and welcome to the session about REST APIs. My name is Sergey. I'm a principal developer at Intersystems based in Sydney, Australia. And today we'll talk about REST APIs in general and I'll do a couple of quick demos. The first one would be to build a REST service uh, from ground up uh, based on Iris classes and another one would be to get the existing open API specification of our REST service and just build an implementation in Iris. So I hope you'll learn more about uh, REST in general and how we support REST in Iris and you will learn a couple of new tricks using different development tools. So to start with, let's talk about APIs. Similar to the UI, the user interface, API is a way uh, for your um, applications to talk to each other. And REST is just one approach to those APIs. It was uh, first developed in around year 2000 and became widely popular around year 2010 uh, with uh, popularity of mobile development and later uh, with the popularity of uh, web development frameworks such as Angular, uh, React and Vue.js which are using uh, REST API calls to interact with um, backend. But really REST is not a specification or a protocol. Um, it is an architectural approach uh, which is characterized by those um, principles that I list here and the values that are listed on this set. So if you look into values, you will find that actually uh, values for the rest are quite similar, quite similar to the values of Iris. So they are coming uh, very well together. Uh, but still, it doesn't really tell us much about how to implement REST APIs at all. So most of the time when we are talking about REST APIs today, we are talking about RESTful web services. So this is uh, REST APIs uh, implemented on HTTP protocol, uh, which complies to uh, principles and values of uh, REST architectural framework. And that gives, uh, gets us to the first uh, gotcha for uh, REST APIs, uh, which comes from uh, being very loosely defined what REST API is. So everybody is implementing REST API slightly differently and you will need some documentation um, and description of how to actually use uh, REST APIs uh, for a particular application. Uh, there are multiple uh, more or less standardized approaches uh, one that you probably will be very familiar with after this conference is Fire, which is uh, REST API. Uh, another one uh, is like uh, Facebook GraphQL, or there is a um, package by Team Livid for Iris, which implements uh, the services in the most standardized way. I'll give you a link at the end of this presentation. Uh, but pretty much, uh, for every uh, REST API, you need a very good documentation on its usage. Uh, that's why there were a few approaches um, lately to standardize this kind of documentation. And probably the most popular and widely used is OpenAPI, which used to be called Swagger, uh, which defines the protocol uh, for using REST APIs. We will look into that uh, during our demos as well. So the next gotcha is uh, one of main principles of REST APIs is that they are stateless and this is quite different from um, the standard client server development even on web uh, where we uh, kind of suppose that we have a session and we can store some application uh, information through the session uh, and then access it when we need it. 
So for REST APIs, uh, session information for application level should not be used. So they can come from any direction. Uh, and if they have the same parameters, uh, they should get the same response from our server. Uh, having said that, authorization is kind of special thing. So um, some people say that authorization should be um, stateless as well. So you should authorize every time you are making a request uh, for your application. Uh, but some people, including me, find actually acceptable uh, to use um, authorization session and authorized by uh, authorization uh, tokens or cookies. Um, and this is helpful when you are using si single sign-on and other authorization technologies. So just keep in mind that uh, there is uh, this trick when building REST APIs and unfortunately we'll have to spend another 20 minutes talking about that if we want to go any deeper. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention before we will go to uh, practical exercises is um, in a lot of examples and uh, tutorials about REST APIs, uh, the APIs that people build uh, reflect um, storage structure of their data. And I think this is um, not very helpful, but what is more helpful to think about when you're building REST APIs is think about your user interfaces and screens, uh, not the structure of your data. So when you are building a user interface, sometimes definitely one screen will uh, be uh, reflective for one um, table in the database. But a lot of time you will get more complex screens uh, which grab data from multiple sources and present them as a single uh, source of data to your application or to your user. Uh, it is especially important when you are building uh, REST APIs that modify data. Because of the stateless um, nature of REST APIs, if you require multiple um, requests for a single database change, uh, you might get into different troubles because uh, the sequence of those requests are not guaranteed. It is not even guaranteed that all the requests will reach the destination and there will be no um, network malfunction somewhere in between. Uh, so, and there is definitely no way to have a transaction that incorporates all of the uh, changes that you send uh, to REST APIs via multiple requests. So when you are building API that modifies database, uh, you should build a structure which uh, encapsulates a single transaction in a single request. That will make your life and the life of uh, application developers who will use your API much easier. So already five minutes passed and I promised you to build a REST API in five minutes. So let's uh, come to some, uh, to do some practical work. In this first demo, I will show you how to start working with Iris and start building our REST API from ground up. So assume that we only have Docker and VS Code installed on our um, machine and we are starting to build the REST API. So we'll um, see how we can use GitHub and VS Code and Docker uh, to build our first API uh, on the Iris side. So first of all, uh, we'll search for Iris REST template. Uh, InterSystems community provides multiple templates uh, for you to start using uh, Iris. And this is one of them. So if you go uh, to this first link, uh, you will end up on the Docker site with our template. And if you are logged in into Docker, you can use this template as a basis for your uh, new project. So all we need to do is uh, give this project a name, uh, choose if it, will be, if it will be publicly accessible or not. 
and uh, click this big uh, green button to create a repository. And after a short while, our repository will be created. So now we can switch into Studio and using the Studio source control capabilities uh, here, we will just clone our repository. So we click this button and there is a clone from GitHub link. And in case if, if you are authorized in GitHub, it will list all your GitHub projects here. You can just choose one, um, choose the folder where you want to place it. I'll create a new virtual semi folder here and click the create repository. So now it will download my source code and we can now open um, this project. So let's see. Well, actually all we need to do now is to start working is just to issue docker app, uh, docker compose app comment, which we can do from uh, Visual Code Studio as well. It will uh, download and build the new container. Uh, here we base it on Iris community with that package manager image. Uh, it will use this installer class to load and compile our project from SRC directory above. Um, and well, after a while, it will just start our container. So now we can use, uh, for example, management portal and terminal. Uh, so here I want to show you uh, how we define uh, new REST uh, APIs. It is defined as web application. So we go to management portal and uh, here our installer created a new REST application for us. So we uh, enable it as a REST API, and all we need to do is provide Iris with a dispatch class, which will be responsible for dispatching uh, our REST API request further after I hit this uh, application. So let's see what happens in this class. There is, uh, consi it consists of two, um, dif uh, of two uh, sections. The first one is where we define uh, the routing. So we, for each route, we define the URL, uh, the method, uh, HTTP method, which is, which is used to call this particular URL, and the method which will be called uh, to answer to this endpoint. So in this particular case, we use the getInfo method uh, to answer to uh, the top level call. So for example, here, if we go to our uh, top level of our web application, it will say, so, well, yeah, version is whatever now we programmed on the previous screen, uh, which is 106 there at the top. So let's try to extend this uh, sample a little bit and create a new um, new entry point for our API. So we'll create a, an entry point to populate a person table with um, random data, uh, which will to create several people uh, which we will pass as a parameter. So here we will uh, define count as a parameter. Method will be post because we are modifying database. Uh, we will create a new method like populate person uh, to populate our table. And we will uh, change the name of entry points. All right. And here I have um, a method already predefined, so that I don't have to type it in. Uh, so I'll just copy paste it here. Uh, so the parameter will be passed into our method. Uh, and all we need to do is just to call uh, preexisting populate method, which will populate our sample class. So uh, before we continue, I wanted to show you how we can use ZPM Package Manager. Uh, this particular image that we use uh, for our development here comes with the ZPM pre-installed. 
So we can use this package manager to install different tools and frameworks uh, that are provided by uh, in your systems development community. And I want to encourage you to use and to contribute uh, your code as well. So here we are installing Swag Swagger UI, which is a third party open source tool, uh, which is packaged into the ZPM uh, package format. So here, once it's installed, we can uh, go and open it in our browser. Uh, so it has this nice interface, uh, which we can use to explore and test our REST API endpoints. This is the endpoint that we just created, populate out. So to test it, all we need to do is click try this out, uh, pass a parameter, doesn't expect anything in the request body, so we will just make this empty. And we click the execute button. Let's see what happens. So it I replied with the empty 2000 uh, status code, which means that everything should be all right. And let's now try to um, get all the records of our person class doesn't have any parameters, so we need to click execute. And here we are, we have some bits uh, in our database populated with new people. Um, and uh, we can examine how exactly our API works. So this uh, becomes possible because we use this Swagger spec endpoint, which provides open API specification based on our API definition. We have a special percent rest API class, which does it for us. And then we can modify output uh, to add some other comments or title um, like here. So if I save and compile this class and then go back and reload this stuff, you can see that now it is in the systems virtual summit the rest of them. So this concludes our first demo uh, where we built REST API from ground up based on the example provided. For our second demo, I will try a slightly different approach. So sometimes uh, we can build an API first. So we will define what our backend needs to do, uh, create open API specification of that, uh, which then can be used by both uh, front-end and back-end developers uh, to develop their parts of code. So here we will load some sample open API specification to our database and uh, try to implement some of that specification. So first of all, let's find some examples of uh, open API uh, specification. So let's try open API sample. There is some uh, samples from the open API standard itself. And here we will use a single pet store uh, API specification. So I will just uh, copy paste it into my Iris uh, instance. So I'll copy it here, go into terminal, and uh, just paste it into pet.json uh, class. Sorry, pet.json file. <coughs> all right, all done. And then I'll use uh, percent rest utility to create a new rest application. I'll name it pet. It will ask me if I really want to create a new REST application, and it will ask me for to provide the Open API Swagger specification for it. So once that's done, it will create a uh, specification, uh, create the REST application for me based on this specification, and deploy it to slash pet. So to start working with this. Um, Application, all I need to do is go to my uh, server and export uh, newly created classes to my 
um, working project. So here I have two classes. The first one is just a definition of open API specification that I uh, copied from uh, that example. And another one is the actual implementation class. So what I'll do here is just implement one entry point. Again, I am a little bit lazy to type it, so I pre-typed it for you. Uh, and I will just use the same sample person data as a source for this API response. So now I'm all ready to go and try test this. So this is an example. If I go to my pet slash pets slash ID, it will find me some uh, person with this particular ID. And that's how you build your REST APIs based on specification. So as a key takeaway, you now know that Iris supports uh, multiple approaches to define and implement REST APIs. If you are interested about REST APIs, I recommend you to visit those uh, free sessions about API Manager. It will bring your API game to the very next level. There is a lot of stuff you can do around REST APIs uh, with the API Manager because of their layer structure. And uh, I encourage you to visit Fire sessions as well. We have lots of them, and Fire is REST API too. So just look at the program and see uh, what kind of Fire uh, sessions might interest you. Uh, there are a few links that I mentioned here. Uh, the first two are uh, from the examples that we tried. And the last one, I mentioned the Team Levitz REST framework for Iris. So if you are going to create a large application, just look at this. Might be helpful, helpful for you. And um, leave me a note if you have any questions. I'll be in the Ask the Expert uh, event on this Friday, uh, next Friday and Monday. So we'll be happy to talk to you and answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much.